You know, in talking about safety first, my goal was to cause us to think more about safety and practice ways in which we can better protect ourselves and our families. And if you are not thinking more, and if you're not watching more or more watchful, then I've failed. I mean, I know this time of year we are more conscious, we're more aware of our potential dangers, and we tend to be just a bit more uh, careful and watchful uh, than usual. But safety and security are not concerns just for the holidays. They are everyday, all-day challenges that demand our attention. They demand that we think. It doesn't have to be the Christmas season or the New Year's season. In fact, by the time the holidays roll around, we should already have all of this worked out. We should already be alert to the risk we take each and every day and how careless we can be at times. Just learning that now may be too late for some. And I hope it's not too late. I mean, come on now, when you think about it, safety really isn't rocket science or brain surgery. It is still my belief that safety is simply a matter of awareness, thinking, and using common sense. <laughs> the problem may be that it's too simple, too easy, so simple that we don't give it the attention that it deserves, that it demands. We really got to pay more attention. Uh, do you not realize that much of what happens to us is preventable? And it doesn't necessarily take uh, a miracle. It could be just a matter of positioning ourselves and preparing ourselves for maximum protection. And we do that by thinking, by paying attention. Again, it's not rocket science. I mean, how many times have you heard phrases like, uh, I just wasn't thinking, or I never thought? Well, I, just, I didn't think. It was just not something that I ever thought about. What about this one? What was I thinking? Or had I been thinking? Now, this is my take, so don't hate. Come on, now, you're not going to hate during the Christmas and New Year's season. Take just a moment. Come on in and let's talk about it. No, no, no. Come on, come on. You have time. Good morning. <laughs> Welcome on this beautiful, rainy Thursday morning for my take. Uh, amen. And uh, I hope you all survived all the storms okay because I had some rough storms through the night. I don't know what it was like where you are, but uh, yeah, it got a little rough uh, during the night. But grateful to God that we survived it all. Amen. Amen. And of course, it's Thursday, December the 30th. It's the eve to New Year's Eve, and, uh, and it's still, in spite of all the rain, it's still unseasonably warm. But I am not complaining. i say it again. I am not complaining. I am just enjoying this good weather, this warm weather, and I hope that you are too. Well, come on. You know I got to represent you know I do. I mean, uh, you know, th this is war. <laughs> this is absolute war. So I got to represent. Go dogs. Amen. Well, we'll see what it turns out to be. But, you know, I just hope it's a good game. Well, obviously, we want Georgia to win, but I hope it's a good game. Okay. Well, now we're wrapping things up today. You know, but we're still, you know, working on the soil, tilling the soil. But as we go from row to row, country folks, farmers, you know what I'm talking about. Well, you know, as we go along the way, we're dropping some seeds along the way. We're, we're still planning some things, still trying to get some things in our mind and our heads uh, that we might know better how to protect ourselves. And although uh, uh, we will wrap up the video segment today, uh, but the Facebook post that I, I've been posting day to day, uh, we'll run that a little while longer. So I hope you've been paying attention and tuning in. And by all means, uh, uh, grab hold of these tips that we'll give you, embrace them, and, uh, and share them with your family, with your friends. I mean, it's nothing deep. It's, it's just stuff that we really ought to think about anyway. But, you know, we're busy, we're involved, we're engaged, and so we don't always uh, think about things as we should. But that's what I'm trying to do is get us to a place where we will be aware, where we will pay attention, where we will think. We'll think about what we're doing. We'll think about how we're doing those things that we're doing. So hopefully, uh, anyway, you've been tuning in to the Facebook. They're only posted on Facebook, so uh, please take advantage of that. And again, share them with family uh, and friends. 
And my hope is uh, that our awareness has been raised, causing us to think more about how to stay safe and how to protect ourselves. I want you to be protected. I want you to stay safe. Now, I want to stay safe. I want to be protected. You know, there was a time that uh, I would have said, if you live in the rural areas, you don't have to worry about certain things. You don't have to worry about this. You live out in the country. Or those, you know, in the city, in the urban area, uh, you know, I would say, listen, you just really got to be careful. You know, you live down there in this city, that city, the other city. And so you really got to be careful. You know, crime is just off the chain down there. I mean, crime is everywhere. Crime left, left cities a long time ago. Come on, you country folk, rural folks. Stop trying to say it's just the city. No, it's not. And that's what happens. We block out, uh, let me see, we block out possibilities. We block out uh, the possibilities of dangers where, danger where we are. And we think about this thing, well, it, it doesn't happen. Nothing like this ever happened here. Well, try to make sure that it never happens there then, if that's the case. Okay, but that line is becoming more blurred between city and rural and those folks who fled the city thinking that they were going to be safer wherever they moved to. It's everywhere. I mean, it is everywhere. So you really have to be careful. Obviously, with a larger population, then the percentages are going to grow. That's, that's obvious. That's simple math. Okay. Then with the advent of, of uh, Internet, Safety has become a more challenging uh, endeavor for all of us. And our responsibility to stay safe and protect ourselves is growing far and wide. And I believe that the answer for us is to develop a pattern of thinking, a new way of thinking as far as the way that we've been thinking, a new way of thinking. And I want to make sure that we understand I am not talking about walking in fear. I'm not talking about living in fear. I'm not talking about paranoia where you always afraid and just look, I want you to look around, but I'm not talking, you know, that paranoia because when people see that in you, when predators see that in you, they know you're easy prey. Okay? But I want us to think. That's all. Just think. I believe that if we just think about things, we'll be good to go. Okay? I mean, when you look at it, for those who are in the military or in law enforcement or those of us who are former military and former uh, public safety personnel, I mean, being alert is no big deal. It's, it, it's natural to us. It's being watchful comes natural for most of us. I mean, because we're you know, kind of always on guard. And, but to the untrained eye, it may seem that we are taking this thing too far, that we're going over the top, you know, because of our training and experiences and our knowledge of how the enemy or the bad guy operates. Yes, to the general public, it may seem that our actions or our reactions are unreasonable or again, just over the top. But it could be that we understand the situation a bit better as we are looking from a different perspective and the enemy exploits our ignorance and our weaknesses. I said the enemy exploits our ignorance and our weaknesses. And when we consider danger, when we consider that we do have enemies out there, uh, danger and the enemy prefer an open door they prefer easy access. Please hear what I'm saying. And here's the point that I'm trying to make, is that protecting ourselves and staying safe is really not that difficult. It's the simple things. Uh, but, but when you look at our enemies and, and, and the, um, uh, the dangers out there, uh, they, they, they prefer uh, an open door, easy access. I mean, thieves and murderers are not chomping at the bits to knock your door down. Obviously, there are times that they do. But they're not chomping at the bits to break into your home. They're not chomping at the bits to break in your vehicle. They prefer that you just leave it unlocked or leave it open for them. And unfortunately, many of us do. Don't do it. Don't do it. Lock the house. Listen. Lock your vehicle and stay safe, okay? I mean, when you're coming and going, do it immediately, immediately. But here's one, one thing I, I want you to do now. When you're leaving your home, you know, I always already told you that, uh, you know, always be watchful of your surroundings, whether you're going and not, you know, entering your home, exiting your home, entering your vehicle, exiting your vehicle. But when you come out of the house, make sure you've already looked around. Make sure... The coast is clear, so to speak, as best you can tell. And, uh, and even before you, you want to lock that door quickly, 
but you want to take a, another last look before you lock that door because if you have to jump back in there, you don't want to be fiddling around with a key trying to get the door unlocked again, okay? So, you know, you may want to come out, stand there with your key, everything looks good, okay, lock it, and make my way to my vehicle, okay? Now, I know sometimes I'm sounding like police, I'm sounding like soldier, I understand that, but uh, trust me, my friend, it happens, it happens every day. You know, when we look at the enemy, when we look at danger, they prefer easy access and a quick getaway. I say it again. They prefer easy access and a quick getaway. <laughs> Listen, they're not trying to pull you from a crowd. They prefer you separate yourself from the crowd on your own. And then they will make their move. So again, just be on high alert. Be very careful, my friend. When we begin thinking, not here, not now, not me, that's exactly what the predators want us to think. They want us to think that all these safety measures, old white haters talking about are just too much. Ah, that's not necessary. They love for you to relax and just go on about enjoying yourself so that they can uh, strike with the least amount of attention and with the least amount of resistance. Please hear me, my friend, because I know that when we're talking about some of these things, you know, some of us are sitting back boring. I'm not saying boring. I'm saying living, <laughs> amen, living, being safe. You know, why some of you may be out there talking about, ah, boring. I'm saying living, okay, and I want you to live, and I want you to be safe. You know, and, and you already know that I can talk, and I can probably give you thousands of safety tips. I'm, I'm talking thousands, but that won't mean a thing if we're not thinking and if we are not using available resources to protect ourselves, it doesn't matter. If I don't get you to think, I mean, uh, 5,000 safety tips are not going to help you if you're not going to think. So that's what I want to I don't want to just teach you safety tips and you remember, oh, yeah, he said this. Oh, yeah, he said, I just want you to think. And if you think, you'll think about the same things that I'm thinking about. <laughs> Again, it's not that difficult. Listen, I mean, for the most part, you know, uh, as we have covered uh, safety first, we've, we've concentrated on public encounters and, and driving. Uh, so I want to finish it out with a few words on safety in the home. I'm not going to uh, spend a lot of time. I'm just trying to spend about uh, 10 minutes with you today, 10 minutes or so, uh, uh, so that you can get on. You know, I've been, been trying to hold it down, but you know, I can go on sometimes. Uh, okay. Uh, but listen to me, my friend. Families with youth and elderly have to be even more cautious. As the families, where you have youth, where you have elderly in the home, children, young people in the home, elderly people in the home, have to be more, even more cautious. You have to take extra measures to protect your family. I mean, it's a much greater responsibility. And I feel for you. I pray for you. You know, uh, because that, that's a huge responsibility. It's a, it's a huge responsibility as it is. But when you have children, when you have the elderly, and basically you're talking about people, or, or maybe even the disabled, uh, you're talking about people who um, really cannot care for themselves as, as they need to. So we have to help them. We have to be there for them. We have to cover them, okay? We have to protect them as well as ourselves, all right? And so with that in mind, uh, please hear me, my friend. With that in mind, know where the children are at all times. When, when you're at home, know where the children are at all times, or wherever you may be. Know where the children are at all times. Know where the elderly are at all times. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? And sometimes it's an even greater battle with the elderly because these are folks who always want to correct us. You know, they know we are their child. It doesn't matter whether we're 75 years old. They still, you're my child. You don't tell me what to do. Well, if you're 120, I'm going to tell you what to do. Okay? I am going to do what I can to protect you. And, uh, yep, yep, I'm going to require some things of you. Okay? And if I say stand here right next to me, stand here right next to me. Okay? Because you're not in a position to protect yourself, even though in your mind you think you are. But you're not. You know, it's just like somebody, you, when sometimes you have to take the keys. Sometimes you have to take the car keys. And they fight tooth and nail. Now, I can drive. I can. No, you are not. 
So we have to take measures, in other words, to protect the elderly and to protect the children. That's our responsibility. That is our responsibility, okay? So make sure that you understand that that, that takes an extra effort. So bless you, uh, you know, for, for doing that and for taking care of those uh, who cannot take care of themselves or who cannot take care of themselves as well as they need to, okay? Now, when we talk about safety, one of the most dangerous places for us to be is in the home. That is one of the most dangerous places for us to be. And then what I consider a close second is in our vehicles, okay? But when you look at the home, there's danger from what is in the home. There's danger from what happens in the home. There are dangers, uh, you know, when we look at things such as accidents and such as arguments and domestic violence and, you know, and then there are threats of danger from outside the home, outside attacks against the home. You know, when we talk about personal attacks, we talk about burglaries, we talk about thefts. And God, home invasions, okay? And for the criminal or the perpetrator, there has to be, or the predator, there has to be the means, there has to be access, and there has to be opportunity. I said there has to be means for them to commit their crime or their acts of violence or whatever the case might be. There has to be means to do it. There has to be uh, access, and there has to be the opportunity there. And uh, in keeping ourselves safe, we want to eliminate as many of those as possible, preferably all of them. Uh, no means to do it, no access to do it, no opportunity to do it, okay? And we definitely don't want to make it easy for anyone to harm us or to take anything from us. We don't want that to happen. We don't want to just make it a cakewalk for them. We want to do all we can to prevent it, okay? So let me share a few things with you. And I'm not going to elaborate on them. You know, I may on one or two, but... Um, uh, again, my, my, my uh, goal is to just get us thinking. Just get us thinking. And then you can handle it. It's, it's kind of like uh, teaching you to fish. And then you can catch your own fish. I'm not trying to feed you fish for the rest of your life. Okay? I want to teach you how to fish so you can do it for yourself. Okay? So I want to teach you to think. I want to encourage you. I don't know if I can teach you to think, but I want to encourage you to think, to pay attention. Okay? So listen, uh, something you may have never may, may never have thought about, it. of course, in schools and in uh, certain workplaces, plants and so, such as that, uh, they have they sometimes in, in many cases they bring in experts, uh, security experts, to do an evaluation of the area and to point out uh, uh, safety concerns. So, but in your own home, do an evaluation of your home. You know where you deliberately, where you purposely uh, uh, take a look. Look for dangers or hazards uh, in, in your home. Look for weaknesses uh, in your uh, security layout, if you will. And also take note of your practices, your habits, and, and your patterns to, to see what adjustments need to be made, not only uh, uh, in you, but also point out the, you know, potential dangers and make the necessary changes, whether with you or with others in the home. And those who live under your roof, if you're the head of the household, you've got to let them know that, no, this is something we have to do. We have to do this as a family. We have to do this as a household. Okay? And so, really, you have to uh, train yourself and discipline yourself to pay attention. And sometimes we have to do that. We have to discipline ourselves, train ourselves, and that's really what they do in law enforcement. That's what they do in the military uh, and in other places. Um, they teach us and train us to think, to pay attention, to look out to what, the, what many of them call pay attention to detail. Watch for the small things, okay? So we have to open our eyes. We have to pay attention. So in the home, and again, I'm just going to run through a few things. Um, while you're looking, while you're evaluating your home to see how secure you really are and how safe you really are, look for electrical hazards, okay? Look for electrical hazards where you got... Uh, you know, 15 different plugs going into one outlet or whatever. Uh, you got frayed wires or wires that are bent, wires that are, are cut, you know, where they expose wires uh, uh, through it. You can see it through the rubber, the rubber shield. You know, those things need to be corrected. So look for electrical hazards where you got appliances that don't work so well. Nope, time to throw it out. Okay? So look for electrical hazards. Look for tripping hazards. And this is something we oftentimes don't think about. This is especially critical when you have elderly in the home. I mean, it, it affects you too, but especially if you have elderly in the home. You've seen how rugs or carpets can crinkle up, how rugs can turn up on the edge, 
and all of that, those are hazards. Those are tripping hazards. And look around, see what you have sitting around. See what you have lying around the floor. Toys can be another hazard. What children are playing with their toys and you know got them scattered all over the house. Um, personally, I think I think you ought to have a certain place for them to play with toys where they want to get, they can get on the floor and just have a great time. Okay, but they can be tripping hazards. They can they can harm somebody. And elderly folks don't need to be falling. I'm going to say that again. Elderly people don't. Nobody needs to be falling, but especially elderly people. You don't need to fall. They don't need to fall. Please protect them, okay? Remove all hazards, okay? While you're going through the home, while you're doing your evaluation, this is critical. I want you to make sure, listen, please think about this. If you have a gun in your home or if you're thinking about uh, putting a gun in your home, give, I mean, think about that, okay? That's a huge responsibility. And you don't want anybody to hurt themselves. You don't want anybody to take the gun and hurt you. I, I'm not giving you another gun lesson right now. Maybe I'll give you another one later. But, you know, a lot of this I've gone over already. And some of y'all remember that. I've gone over it already. Okay, so, but think about that. And if you if you are going to have a gun in home, make sure that you have it locked, put away, that it's safely put away. Okay? Children can't get to it. You know, nobody can get to it. You, the enemy can't. The intruder can't get to it. Okay? So please give that some thought, whether you want to have a, a, a weapon in your home or not. I mean, it's more than a notion, okay? Uh, watch for slippery floors and, and slippery bathtubs and, and all of that. And um, so pay attention to that. See if there are some things that you need to do. Certainly you don't want to be running through the house. You, to, you have a linoleum, linoleum or hardwood uh, uh, floor or um, uh, whatever those other panels they put down. I don't know what they call all that. But uh, if it's slippery, well, I don't think it's a good idea to walk through the house Certainly not run through the house in your socks, you know. I, I don't think it's a good idea. I think you ought, you ought to always um, wear shoes. Now, most of the time when I'm at home, I have, I'm, most of the time I'm fully dressed. <laughs> most of the time I'm fully dressed. I'm good to go. I'm ready to roll. You know, but that's, that's me. Um, but I think we should always uh, wear shoes. And... Uh, and, and those who are diabetic, I've been diagnosed as di diabetic, and that's one of the things that my doctor uh, tells me is to always wear shoes because, you know, you can't, you don't want to get uh, your, your, your feet injured. You, you don't want anything to happen. You don't want to step on something that, that causes a cut. And, uh, and for those who are diabetic, you know it takes longer for things to heal. You know, and sometimes they don't heal. You know, it can become a real problem for us. All right. So just be uh, watchful for that kind of thing. Check your windows out. Uh, uh, make sure that they are secure. Uh, now, and, and now, let me say this. Uh, when it comes to windows and doors, I want you to protect yourself, but don't imprison yourself. Did you hear me? Protect yourself, but don't imprison yourself. If those windows have been painted over and you haven't had them made sure that they were still able to be lit up and down, you need to take care of it immediately. If you need to get out of that house, you need to get out of the house. Okay? And those windows need to be where they can be open any time, all the time. They need to be where you can unlock them and open them. And I mean get them up in a hurry. Don't worry about the screen. Knock the screen out and get on out of there if you need to. Okay? But, but watch those windows. You know, because, yeah, mm -hmm. some of you are thinking right now, oh, that's right, I haven't opened those windows in 36 years. Go get them open. Get some, if you can't do it, get somebody to come in and open those windows so they can go up and down. Okay? All right? And again, I talked about the flooring. You know, wrinkle rugs and rugs and, 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 uh, and carpets and, and what we call, at least mom and them just call it throw rugs. I don't know what they call them, but throw. <laughs> I guess because you just throw them down somewhere, I reckon. I don't know. But you have to be watchful. Those can be hazards, again, especially for the elderly. Okay? And then uh, if you have stairs, uh, you, know, you want to check the handrails. You, you want to make sure they're not dangling up and down. You want to make sure they're secure, that if you fall, if you trip, you can grab the handrail, and the handrail is not going down the stairs with you. Okay? All right? So you know, notice these kinds of things. Look at it. Look around. Just pay attention. If I could get us to just pay attention and just think, that's going to go a long way. Take note of how you and your family handle disputes. 
and disagreements. Let me tell you something. Things can get out of hand. They can escalate in a heartbeat. They can. They can. Please, please look at how you, and you know, I'm not suggesting that every family is fighting, every family is arguing, but sometimes it just comes up out of the blue, the simplest thing. Listen, you don't want to die because somebody got a shrimp that's bigger than yours. You don't want anybody to die because somebody touched your apple just before you ate it. I mean, sometimes some of the most ridiculous things happen because things can escalate in a hurry. So look at how uh, you handle disputes, how you handle disagreements, and how you handle even arguments, okay? Uh, you, know, uh, you know, sometimes we could be arguing all the time, and you know, if you notice you're arguing all the time, find something, find another way to handle it. If you find that you're always coming close to engaging, wanna find a different approach to it, okay? Learn to de-escalate the situation and not egg it on, not escalate it. And please avoid domestic violence. I'm going to talk about that again um, probably soon. Uh, but, but please avoid any kind of domestic violence, okay? Let me give you just a few, a few more things here. Protect yourself. I told you this already. Protect yourself, but don't imprison yourself. So look at, look at sometimes how you have to do a lot. Again, you want to protect yourself. Now, on deadbolt locks, my, my preference is this. On deadbolt locks, I don't like the knob inside that you turn to unlock. I prefer a key. Well, you, it requires a key on both sides. That's my preference. So that uh, I can remove the key if I need to. Okay, so if someone breaks the window, six, sticks their hand in there, there's not a knob that they can turn. Okay, now, but if you do that, you got to make sure you know where the key is at all times. And you got to be able to get to the key. And then you got to make sure that you, you know, you're scared, you're nervous, you know, you hear somebody in the garage and, you know, whatever the case might be. Or you hear somebody in the house and you're trying to get out or, the, you know, maybe, God forbid, there's a fire and you're trying to get out. And where did I put the key? Make sure if you if you choose this way, make sure that you know where that key is. Put it in the same place every time and make sure everybody in the house knows where it is. It won't hurt to sometimes just practice it. Just practice it. You know, and if you want to simulate <laughs> I don't know where I came up with this, but if you want to simulate fear, go out and run around the blocks three or four times till you get good and tired and you're sucking for air. Then go in there and see if you can put the key in the hole. Okay. <laughs> all right. Uh, all right. But you do whatever is best for you, but don't put all these locks on the door and then when it comes time for you to get out of you can't get out. You know, again, God forbid there'll be a fire. God forbid there'll be a home invasion. You know, you, you want to be able, and I'll talk about this in a moment, but you want to be able to make your escape if you need to, okay, my friend? So lock, lock, lock them out, but don't lock yourself in. Make sure you can get up out of there. Make sure the windows are working. Make sure your doors are working so you can get out of there. Where am I on my time? Okay, I'm still at it. Okay. <laughs> All right. And, you know, and just as you would be careful and just as you would be uh, selective about um, who you allow in your home, uh, also be selective about who you allow in your life. But I want to, you know, listen, and you need to be careful about who you allow in your life. There are people that we allow to get close to us, to get up in our space and, and give them access to certain things, and you don't know a thing about them. How do you know that's his name? How do you know that's who she says she is? Don't know anything about them. So be very careful about that. Okay, my friend? And, and just be careful about who you allow in your home. Okay, be careful about who you allow in your home. Now, uh, uh you may not have noticed this, but this uh, th th this came to my attention way, way back. But I noticed that uh, one of my nieces picked up on it as well. Do you not realize, you know, when you have a party or when you're just having a big family gathering and people are going, and here's what we do generally. We leave the door unlocked so whoever comes in the door, we just say, come on in. You don't know who you're letting in. You know, I was at my sister's one day, and I think we were celebrating uh uh, it may have been Thanksgiving, whatever it was. We had a big gathering of family. And then I have a niece who, uh, who is a, a veteran. She spent time in the military. So we're all in there and we're talking. And the house is crowded and, and all of that. The door was left unlocked. And, and this guy walks in and she looks up. She sees the guy. She doesn't recognize him. And you know how we do. Who's that? Do you know who that is? 
And she's asking around, you know, who's that? Is that that's your friend? Is he with you? Everybody, goes, I don't know. I don't know who it is. She walks over to him, stops him at the door, and says, Excuse me, are you looking for somebody? <laughs> are you with somebody? I mean, she stood him up right there. I mean, she did. She stood him up right there. And we have to be, don't leave your door unlocked without somebody being there to monitor, monitor it, okay? Put an usher on the door, okay? <laughs> Put somebody there, you there, get there, somebody to monitor who's coming in your home. Because there are people, they driving by, they see all these cars out there, oh, party. Then they'll come in to rob, come in to kill, come in to steal. Door wide open, they just walk right in. Okay, so be very careful about that, okay? And uh, be watchful for too many plugs. I talked about the electrical hazards and all of that, so uh, pay attention to that. And I want you to uh, 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 think about, you know, using in the, in the home. And this is something that's very helpful for me, using timers. Uh, so when you're cooking, you know, I, my mind is always going, so I can, you know, sometimes I can get a little bit distracted. Um, because I'm thinking about uh, 256 miles ahead. <laughs> and, and, you know, so sometimes when I'm cooking, when I'm doing something, uh, I would just, I got a little simple, inexpensive timer. I turn it on so that my attention goes back to where it needs to be uh, within a reasonable time. And especially when I'm on the computer, when I'm preparing to do what I'm doing now. You know, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm writing down information, making notes and all of that. Uh, and, and I can forget, maybe I, you know, I, you know, got a piece of chicken in the oven, whatever, you know. So time must work well, especially for, again, for uh, elderly, uh, because sometimes, you know, you, you don't need your elderly person at home cooking. But if they insist on it or if they're doing it without your knowledge, at least teach them how to use a timer so that it will alert them that you have something on the stove, okay? Then uh, night lights, uh, you know, we kind of have throughout the house uh, uh, motion sensor night lights that um, as you walk down the hallway, a light will come on. Now, that's not your sole source of light. Now, don't use that. Uh, you know, don't don't use that as a, don't be trying to save electricity. Say when that little light comes on, because eventually it's going off, and you don't want to be caught in the middle of darkness. <laughs> okay, so the night light is just there as you walk through to provide you some light, so you can see the light switch. Okay, that's not your sole source of light. You know, get up, well, I got to go to the bathroom, and then as soon as you get out of the bed, the light comes on, oh, I'm good to go. All right, wait till you try to get out of the bathroom and see what happens. <laughs> okay, so those are just some things that can that can help us. Uh, amen. Those are some things that, that can benefit us, but more than anything else, it's thinking. <laughs> it's thinking. It's paying attention. Okay? And, uh, and again, know where your elderly are at all times. Your children on the internet, monitor them and limit their use on that. Uh, I can't get into that right now. Uh, design a plan of escape and practice that plan of escape. Your fire drill, you know, a drill for home invasion. What are you going to do if somebody comes in your home? Weather situation like we had last night, the storms. And what you're going to do if, you know, if uh, uh, a tornado comes, if trees fall, all of that stuff. Are you hearing me? All right, my friend, I'm about to let you out of here. Take nothing for granted. Take no one for granted. Take nothing for granted. Take no one for granted. Think, 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 and pay attention. Now, that's my take. What do you have to say? Sound off. Yeah, that's good. Love it when you pay attention. Love it when you think.